Let's start this thing. Cheers. How are you? <laughs> Fabulous. Driven, driven up for the morning. Yes. Yeah, brave the traffic and a uh, bit of a day for it, hey? <laughs> it is <laughs> a day intended. for it. <laughs> Pun intended. Congrats on the um, the track. Thank um, you. Doing really well. Number yeah. one on track source. track source. Yeah, awesome. And you said you're doing a little something today for it. Yeah, we're going to um, do a celebratory film clip for it. Yeah, nice. Mm. Yeah, awesome. And so that's what just like heap of mates and stuff coming around doing something like a bit of a party style. Yeah, thing. we're yeah. going to do like a um, Kikon's Bender yeah. Weird, yeah. Weird shit style. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that sounds pretty on on point then. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, hey, I think you know that we're a little bit left from the centre. Yeah, so. yeah, <laughs> yeah. So how has the whole like label label thing been going? Like, it's, uh, it seems to be doing really well. Yeah, look, um, to be honest, I think we're doing a lot better than we realised we would do. Yeah, you kind of don't really know how you're going to do with this sort of stuff. Yeah. So I mean, majority of the songs are all charting. Yep. which is pretty damn good cool. for yeah. first year in business, yeah. heading into second. So, yeah, doing good. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah I have to I have to get my pull my finger out and start writing some tunes. Literally so send, send us some stuff. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I've been waiting working, for it. I was working on something, on a remix for Demo, and then we had to move the studio, and I was like, oh, man, I won't finish it in time. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah but now we're here. Um, I'm pretty keen to yeah, get, get sorted. So Def. You were just in Melbourne too, you said. Yeah, played down in Melbourne last Sunday yep. at Vineyard, which was in St Kilda, real cool venue. Yep. So a um, little bit of a weird vibe because of COVID. Yeah. Everyone's still a little bit unsure of what's going on. People didn't even know if you could go out. So, But it still was a vibe, definitely my kind of scene. Yeah. That real weird housey. Yeah. Yep. How did you get, like how did that happen getting that gig down there does it um to be honest i didn't even actually intend to get some gigs oh yeah you just going down yeah, yeah i was just going down i thought you know what the borders have opened i've got some really amazing girlfriends down there mm-hmm. wanted to catch up yeah cool actually sent jared a message because i noticed he was playing and was just thinking oh you know what i want to go listen and watch some support some DJs yeah. and Jared just messaged me and he was like, no, we'll, we'll find you a gig here. Yeah. 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 yeah so that's awesome. Yeah. That, that's great when, when that kind of stuff happens and it's like, you're just going for fun or something and then mm. all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, do you want to play as well? It's like, do I want to play? Yeah. Like <laughs> there's like, a bear shit in the woods. <laughs> yeah. You're like, what, what are you talking about? Do I want to play? Yeah. yeah. I've, I've got my USB on me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a prerequisite that I was. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, that's definitely, that's, that's awesome that, um, you know, you got to play down there. A yeah, bit. definitely. And did you get to go out much at all then I, when you were down there? I did the Friday night. Um, went to George and Collins, which is a really kind of nice up marketish bar. So I went there for a little bit. Decided to get out of there. It was more of an R and B thing, and as you can tell, like I'm super into R and B. No disrespect. There are some great R and B DJs. Yeah, yeah. But um, so then we ended up going to Storyville, which look, I don't really remember much after that. Yeah, yeah. It was one of those nights. Super sober. Yeah. <laughs> sober Shazza was out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would have been um, yeah, pretty fun. So you got like a heap of like mates and stuff down there. Then, yeah, you're saying. yeah, yeah, cool, yeah, cool. I would what? like to move down there eventually. Yeah, mm. no, nah, let's just make Brisbane cool. We should, shouldn't we? Yeah, everyone's moving up here. I know they've <laughs> come we in. We were just in talking droves. about that before. Yeah. yeah, everyone's moving. I've met, I've met at least five or six people in the last week or so that have moved up from Melbourne. Yeah, like so, I'm hoping that that'll mean our music scene will get like stronger in terms yeah. of like more people going out that enjoy dance music and that sort of culture. So yeah. I think that could be potentially cool. I do believe that there's um there's a really cool bar on the Gold Coast called Split. Yeah. Um so I didn't know that. Oh, it's honestly awesome. Braden Cicado, he's actually yeah. booking the DJs there. Yeah, nice. And they've created that whole alternative minimalish deep housey yeah, cool. vibe. Nice. It's rad. It's a rooftop bar. Yep. That's so awesome. um better. he's done really good things there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Shout yeah. out to him because yeah, yeah. the owners go, are go wanted Gold that. Coast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like um. <laughs> Gold Coast and Brisbane, you know, I think there's some really cool spots. Yeah. Um, you know, coming around. So mm. where are you playing at the moment anyway? Like are you Um, so I've had a few gigs at Arcade. Yep. Which is new on the coast as well, a house venue. Yep. So um really, really cool venue. They're 
in the startup phase, so it's building that club now. Yep. And I'm also at La La Land on Saturday nights, so pretty much a, on the rotating roster there, which is cool. So how is it playing on CDJ 3000s? Then? Oh, honestly. How are they? Like, because I've, I've, <laughs> yeah, because I, I, I went to the opening at Prince Consort when they did like that thing. They must have dropped a shitload of money on that because oh, was, yeah, there was like an oyster bar, mm-hmm. like everything was free. Like there was food, drinks, like. Yeah, cocktails, man. I it's was, a venue. I was wasted for a Wednesday night. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, I couldn't go to the opening. Yeah, stroke. Um, that place is honestly awesome. Mm. What what he's doing in there is he's creating such a really good vibe. Yeah. So even just like all the different rooms, the different bars, yeah, Greaser Bar, and all that sort of stuff. I, I love the. Is it four hundred rabbits? I think. Yeah. The, the Mexican yeah. bar. That's that was one of my favorites when I went there. Like, yeah, for that right. Opening thing like yeah, they had all these Mexican like you know cocktails and stuff. Which yeah. Really cool. Yeah. And then they've got all the performers walking around, which is really cool. You get to see some pretty, pretty um, girls who are all dressed up and yeah, nice. some out the gate experiences. Yeah. <clears throat> which I kind of, I love. That reminds me a little bit of family. They used to have yeah. weird stuff like that. Yeah. Like with people like dressed up all weird and then they'd have like the fire breathers and stuff upstairs. Yeah. Like, doing that like cool stuff. I suppose, you know, what he's been around for a while, he's, mm. he's seen all that kind of stuff and, and definitely probably, you know, implementing a bit. Yeah. He's done well. Props off to Waddy. I think yeah. he's doing a really amazing job. Yeah. yeah. Come on the podcast sometime. We'll, we'll have to have a chat. He yeah. keeps coming up. Everyone keeps bringing him up. So he'll have to come on. So, yeah, um, definitely. But, um, so, yeah, the La La Land, that upstairs area. Mm. Um, yeah, pretty cool space. What What's the, like, kind of vibe up there for people who haven't been before? Because I've only been on the opening. I should probably come and see you play sometime. But um, yeah. what, what's it like up there? <laughs> well, it's a very luxurious upmarket sort of vibe. Yeah. Um, they do do burlesque shows in there as well before. Okay, so yeah. you're thinking, like, um, deep colours, chandelier sort of yeah. real classy. And then we play a bit of a new disco, disco-y funk right up into some weird house. Yeah, cool. So um, Sounds right up my alley. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's honestly cool. Yeah. And you get – you don't get a pretentious crowd. You get quite a variety, a mixture of people. Mm. Everyone's welcome. Um, everyone dresses a little, a little sort of nicer than just a dive bar, so to speak. Yeah. But it's actually a, a diverse crowd, which is awesome. Yeah. It's yeah. Probably because of the like the venue is so yeah diverse in like because it's all connected. as a whole. Yeah. There's mm. all the different rooms. When I went there, there's one room I didn't go to the the one that's down past La La Land and that. Upstairs, I can't remember what it is. I remember seeing a hallway down Oh, the there. Bowie room. Yes, the yeah. Bowie room. I didn't. Yeah. And my mate, when, when I went to the opening, she was like, make sure you check out the Bowie room. Yeah, because, it's really cool. Because she loves like, you know, Bowie. Yeah. So, and then I was like, I don't think I saw the Bowie room. She's like, what? I yeah. told you to check it out. Like, yeah. Well, so, it is sort yeah. of a little bit of a maze into it. Yeah, that's what I was a bit, you know, I thought it might have just been like toilets down there or something. No, no, no. no. It's a cool little room. It's actually more of a private, intimate sort of a room. Yeah, so you cool. can hold functions and yeah, whatnot. Nice, nice. And there's a private little bar in that. So, yeah, it's a cool room. Just they've got so many different themes in the venue. Yeah. Which is yeah, awesome. Yeah, exactly. You're yeah. not bored. Yeah, and you can just go, oh, I'll just go down and have a drink. Here, like I'll go get a, I'll go get a mojito in the you know four hundred yeah. rabbits and yeah. then just go have a beer in the beer garden. I feel like a mojito now. Yeah. Is it too early? No, I don't know. it's <laughs> never too early. Like <laughs> Nine thirty. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I I I reckon that's a cool place and yeah, three thousands. Seriously. How are they? Like cause yeah, really good. Because I, I, I went to that thing and I I had I touched them. And got to see yeah, them. touched them. But I didn't get to play. Did you touch them? You press the buttons the right way? I didn't get to play <laughs> on them, I, but I touched it. But I touched them. No, yeah. there. it's, yeah, I was a little bit surprised. Didn't know that I was playing on 3000s. First thought was, fuck, are oh, my USBs going to read? <laughs> because, sure, yeah, you know, yeah. like, you're yeah, like, you oh, never know, but yeah. is it the right record box that I've um, analysed yeah, them like, in? Yeah, it's like, oh, you need to have record box, yeah. you know, this version for them to work or something, yeah. But no, it was fine. Uh, and then... Working out that it's all touchscreen, so they're really cool. Um, they obviously hold time super well, so having to yeah. keep your time in is a bit of a breeze, really. Yeah. But definitely a privilege to be playing on them. Yeah. So because they're super expensive too, aren't they? Oh, like, something. I don't like, know how much they are, but it's four grand or something yeah, a deck. Yeah. Three or four. Mental. I don't know, man. Um, but there's three of them, so. 
this um just I know I've been talking about Clubhouse like all the time to everyone mm. online, but I've actually I was actually directly messaging the head of Pioneer Products um, worldwide. I seen that because, you posted that because he was just in a room. And we were there, like, it was like Dead Mouse and all these other people and everyone was talking and someone was like, oh, this is blah, blah, blah. Like the, the, the moderator's just like, oh, we've just got, just got you know, so-and-so's just jumped in. He's the head of Pioneer for products. Like, yeah, you know? right. And then I was like, just clicked on his profile, clicked on Instagram, message him. Hey, man, how you going? <laughs> like, you know, like, I just met you on I'm Clubhouse. Just, I'm just listening to you speak on Clubhouse right now. Like, and it's amazing because, you know, when you're on – Clubhouse, there's no text or messaging or anything. So when you actually just got it there, yeah. it's just speaking. So if you're like speaking, you've got it there and then you'll see like a notification come up from Instagram. It's like right. someone wants to send you a message. People usually go, well, they must be in Clubhouse. So they click on it and then they'll actually read your message as opposed to you just randomly sending a message to someone. Okay, yeah. And them, not, and them being like not even seeing it or whatever. You know they're on their phone. And they're not looking at anything, but they're speaking. So yeah. it's like, it's this weird networking thing where people, wow. like, you can just get in touch with people. And I've had people on there, like, say, like, message me and go, oh, oh, yeah, can you send me some music? And yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, I don't really have any at the moment. But <laughs> I haven't done anything for I, a little bit, but yeah, I will. But, but when I can, and they're like, yeah, cool, I'd love to hear your music. And it's like, okay. That's like, cool. It's yeah. just like, it's really like a lot of, yeah, people don't, um, Sort of realise the – it's just like – it's like networking on steroids. That's like, what I kind of was thinking. It's mental. Like, I only know about it, honestly, from you posting yeah, about it. No one knows about so, it. So, like, yeah, it's I was really, wondering the other day, like, yeah. how on earth does – when did this become? It's, it's been around since, like, April last year. That's mm. when it first – like, that's when they were, like, trialling, like, just starting it. Right. But, like, I think, like, you know, March, May, it sort of – they sort of started – doing it but because it's invite only yep it's like you have to it's an exclusive group. yeah you have to know someone but then when you get invited you get two invites oh, so you can okay. give two invites and, out and that's and how it the grows more you, the more you use it yeah the more invites you get so okay like I've gotten, so so i've like i've probably gotten like six invites now yeah slowly um don't worry, you're on my list. Yeah. Like, there, there's a massive list because everyone's like, can I have an invite? I'm like, I'll add you to the list. And I've just got this like, notes thing in my phone with all, in these, order. all these people. Door so, list. Um, but, yeah, like so when I get more, I try and dish them out to everyone. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I'll swing you one when I, when I get Yay. some more. Yay. I would um, appreciate that. Yeah. That so, sounds a great platform. Yeah, just, just crazy. So I've started doing rooms every – uh, basically Monday to Thursday at six o'clock. Yep. Called the Australian uh, Australian Music Industry Network. Yeah, sick. Um, and we've started getting some like cool people. Like we had um John Curtin on last night, who was like the guy behind Stereo Sonic. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he was just like telling us stories about like you know like we're just asking him about like stereo and like yeah, that's so, cool. And and because it's like voice, it's like it's like this. Yeah. But like with a group of us like just sitting here like. Talking. Actually, just having a, yeah. a good old shit. So chat. yeah, and like the head of Mosh Ticks was in there. Like, mm. so it's just like crazy that you can have that access to people, and you just ask them questions, and everyone's just tells you stuff. Yeah, like they give you advice and info. Like it's like people just share that kind of stuff. Yeah, like, right. So you could yeah. actually really use that um, if you if you wanted to better yourself, you could really utilise that as a good personal development platform. Oh, yeah. There's rooms for everything. Yeah, that's There's cool. There's rooms I really all about like that, that stuff. I went into a room randomly and it was, uh, what was it called? It was called Giggles and Gratitude, 15 uh -huh. minutes. And so it was a laugh yoga instructor. Yeah. And so you would, he would go to one person and say, what are you grateful for? And they'd say what they're grateful for. And then he'd give us all a, like, a laughing exercise to do together. Yeah, that's so proven to work. Everyone turns them, them, their mic on. Yeah. And then he'd be like, oh, so now we're laughing like a kid. So everyone laughed together <laughs> like, hee, hee. And so everyone yeah. would do it. Like, and you'd and it, end up literally just losing it. Yeah, and everyone's yeah. laughing. And then he's like, all right, stop, deep breath in. And like, yeah, and out. Oh, and then like, that's cool, mindfulness. And, and you actually like, I've that was crazy. That made me feel like yeah instantly like oh i feel really awesome like, yeah because your body doesn't he was like at the end he's like your body doesn't actually know that you're pretending to laugh yeah it can't tell the difference the difference you're using so once, the muscles and the neuro yeah. pathways and once you'd start doing it and he said and then you know it, it makes you feel better mm. so yeah i was just like that blew my mind it was just like so 
Yeah, just rooms for everything. Yeah, anything that's you cool. Can think of. I dig that. Yeah, yeah. There's like singles rooms. Oh, <laughs> there's well. like yeah, there's all kinds of things. <laughs> it's like, been a while, so you, you know, know. Elon Musk was on talking about stuff. Like there's yeah, just, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. So it's just it's just wild. That's insane. <laughs> yeah, that's actually insane. So yeah, it's, I'm um, so big on personal development. So yeah, well yeah. yeah, you'll you'll love it. Like there's and there's heaps. There's lots of business stuff as well. Yeah, people, you know, entrepreneurs. Like there's um. One of the Shark Tank guys yeah, actually right. runs a room where he actually basically lets people pitch like on Shark Tank. Yeah. And he'll invest if he thinks like he'll do deals with people. Oh wow. Like that's incredible. And that could be, you could be anyone. You could just have an idea and pop in the room and yeah. raise your hand you raise your hand and then they can bring you up on stage to speak. And, and at the end of the day, anything can start with just an idea. Yeah. So you just never know. Yeah. That's awesome. It's, yeah, it's really, really good. I need I to get it. around that. Yeah. I'll, some people have found invites by just asking uh, like on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I've had a, and a friend just got one. Like someone was just like, oh, yeah, here you go. Just gave him a free invite. Yeah. Um, and then some other people, they're like, someone's trying to sell me an invite for like $15,000. Holy like, moly. I was like. Nah, nah. Man, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, not, don't do that. That's probably not. Just trying to take advantage. Yeah, yeah but well. yeah, it's um, yeah, it's it's really cool. And even like you know, so many people I've talked to are like, oh, I don't like talking, or I'm an introvert. I don't really wouldn't. I'd hate that. Yeah. But you'd see people on there that are like, I'm an introvert, but I love this. Like, I don't understand why they're yeah. like, I don't get it. Like, but it's because you don't. There's no video. Or anything. It's okay, just, so it's just dialogue, it's really. Just, yeah, it's yeah. just audio. So it's you feel a bit more comfortable, I guess. Yeah. yeah. That's insane. Um, even if you're an introvert, if you have something you're passionate about, you still want to talk about it. Yeah. So I, I mean, you don't have to look at people yeah, and, and you don't, feel self conscious or anything like yeah. that. Yeah. You Do know. you find that um, with something I've been discovering recently is obviously in our industry, we're all very, we come across as very show pony ish. Mm. But if you notice that most, most people in the creative industry, we're all introvert extroverts. Yeah, everyone's a mix. Yeah. I've actually gone away from the concept of introvert extrovert now. Like I, I think that people just feel comfortable yep. being either one of those things in certain situations. It's yeah. like, you know, when you're if you're an introvert but you're around a group of really tight friends, yep. you probably won't be introverted. It you'll would you'll come probably out. be more extroverted. Yeah. And so I think it's just people feel more comfortable in situations like identifying yeah, as that. Yeah. So it's like, you know, there's times where, you know, I feel like I don't, like I feel introverted sometimes. Yeah. <clears throat> People would never think that I'm an introvert. No, <laughs> like God, from, no. You know, from seeing, <laughs> but like, there's times where I'm at things and I'm like, oh, I really don't want to talk to anyone. Like, yeah. I just want to sort of like yeah. sit here, like, you know, I don't, I don't really feel comf- like I want to talk to people. Yeah. Or something. Oh, I get super awkward in situations. Everyone thinks like, when? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. Yeah. No, I'm I know everyone sees me as this I am what I am. Let's just yeah, say that. Yeah. But um no, I have a lot of I need to be alone quite a lot. Yeah. So I put this big show on and I'm me out there, but then honestly I need at least 80% on my own. Yeah. Just to and like that's recharge the 20%. And, yeah. 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 Just yeah. explode. And then I'm like, holy shit, what the yeah. hell? Where did that come from? Yeah. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Something I've been noticing a lot lately um, just through conversation as well is mm. most people, Jake um, Spence, Apollo Jackson, yep. we were talking about that too. I did a gig with him not too long ago and – He's like this big show, you know what I mean? He does yeah. his magic tricks and everything. Yeah. He's on, been on several TV shows, but Jake's actually um, a quiet person as well, needs his alone time quite a lot. I, could t- I can tell that. Just yeah. By look- like, I don't know why, like, because he's right out there, but I can just yeah. tell, like, I don't know why I've always thought that he looks like he would be yeah. like that at times. Yeah. Yeah. But he's just, doing really well too. I love what um, him and uh, Combs was do- were doing with the um, – that show they the live oh, stream through they were COVID. Doing. Yeah, yeah. They, they do magic tricks and stuff and yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was that was funny. Super interactive. I'll tell you who's doing really good um from the Gold Coast at the moment is um high up. Mitchell oh, yeah, yes. Yeah, well we're trying to organize a podcast actually. So he's he's gonna awesome. come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um I've supported Mitch from day one. He's just we're from the Gold Coast, you know. Yeah. We're you gotta a support little bit older. Yeah, yeah. We've been friends for quite a long time. Yeah. But, um, yeah, super, super proud of him because he's, like I always constantly say about you, I always praise you. You're one of the most hardest Thank working you. in the industry. <laughs> um, 
I take my hat off to Mitch too because yeah. he's such a hard worker in the industry. Yeah. And he just doesn't doesn't care about anything and everything. He's just got his goal and he focuses and he goes yeah. 100 for and it. And that's what you need. Yeah. yeah. He just does him, which is super cool. So I'm super proud of Mitch at the moment. Um we were trying to get him to come part of the film clip today. Uh, yeah. But I think he's a bit um, unwell, he said. Yeah, mm. yeah. Big one last night or something. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you mean Bender? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect for the film clip. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. So yeah. let's talk about how you started then. Yeah. Like DJing or music or whatever. Like how um, long ago was this? Like I, I know. A long time. I know we've both been around for a little while. Yeah, so, we so have, what, haven't we? What? Uh, when did you start and what? So, How did this happen for you? Like, did you do music when you were younger? Or yeah, I've always been um, around music. My dad is a big music influence in my life. Yep. Plays drums, plays guitar. Um, he's very multi-talented. So I started playing bass guitar as well when I was in high school yep. and used to sing quite a lot and all that sort of stuff. Did, did, the, you, did you want to be in the Smashing Pumpkins? Oh, man, I was the Smashing Pumpkins. What are you talking about? Because they, they always have hot, like, hot chick bass players. That's, <laughs> yeah. their, that, that's their thing. Yeah. No, so I actually got lessons from a guy, Josh Scar, his name was. Yeah. He was um, a friend of mine's older brother. And so I knew that he played bass guitar. Mum and dad bought me a cheap bass guitar. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started. Then I sort of put music down, focused on sport. And it wasn't until what I sport? was... What soccer. Sport were you into? Yeah, soccer. Soccer. Yeah. 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 So did quite well at soccer. What position? I was striker. Oh, of course you were. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> quite fiery actually Just on the field. Scoring goals, kicking yeah, goals kicking. all day. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and it applied through life. Yeah. Um so then actually it when I actually started more DJing, it was around, you know, 2002 was the love of Ministry of Sound and yeah. that when electronic music really started becoming in, in Australia. Yeah. And I ended up with my now ex-husband. Yep. He and I used to just love going to festivals and he decided he wanted to DJ. So off I went and bought 2000s. Yeah. And he didn't play them. Yeah. Yeah. So me being the person that I am, I was like, you know what? Stuff ya. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah. And so I taught myself. Yeah. And, um, yeah, just literally used to sit there, play around on the decks, taught myself everything, obviously musically minded. So just learned what every button was and that's where it started. That's like back in the day, I always say back in the day, but like we, that's how it kind of was, wasn't it? Yeah. We had, there wasn't. Now there's DJ schools and yes. people. That, we didn't have you know, that then. Yeah, that, that will teach and do lessons and there's a million YouTube videos yeah. on how to DJ and produce music and all that kind of stuff. There is a million of them, yeah, literally. And, and it's like back then it was like, no, mm. if you wanted to do it, you kind of just had to figure it out unless you had a friend or you knew someone. Yeah, yeah. But for a lot of us it was like, uh, figure it out. Okay. Yeah, figure out how to do it, like, you know. And back then it was a lot harder when I started, it was CDs. Yeah. So you'd have to carry your CD case around. Yeah. My very first gig was down at Phillip Island Hotel. I may have um, faked it till I made it, so to speak, to get the gig, and it was terrible. And then because <laughs> it was way harder, CDs were oh way harder. Oh my god, so harder. They float. You couldn't keep them in time. Yeah. And, and you didn't have like a point. You know. Mm. Two six, uh, you know, no, yeah, you didn't. it was you just didn't. like it was, it was all by 124. Ear. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's somewhere uh, around 124. Yeah. Figure it out, like, and then you just sort of you you had to actually listen and learn music to play, yeah. So that's when it started, yeah, mm. awesome. And then so you you did that first gig. How did you how did you fake it till you made it to get that gig? What, um, how did that happen? That first gig. So basically, I'll never forget it. We went down to Phillip Island Hotel. We were living down in Melbourne and basically made friends as we do. Aiden, my ex-husband, is a very outgoing person. Yep. We're still good friends. We have a daughter together, obviously. Um, so he's very outgoing. I'm very outgoing. We made friends with everyone in the hotel. Yeah. And then <laughs> everyone, <laughs> everyone in the hotel. Like the we locals. Everyone's friend. Yeah, yeah. We, we did. We'd go down there and just laugh and yeah. you know talk shit and we made friends with shandy at the time who was the manager and i told him like i've got decks yeah i dj i'm from the gold coast so yeah. everyone assumed that being from the gold coast you could dj yeah 
and that's how I got my first gig. Yeah. So, <laughs> so tell them you're from the Gold Coast. Yeah. <laughs> and they go, oh, she knows music. Yeah. But my first gig was for the uh, V8 Supercars after party. Okay. Yeah. And it was pretty wild. Yeah, that would be. And yeah. Did, is it, so is this the one at the, the Phillip Island Hotel? Yes. Chain? And you said it went terrible. It was so funny. It was like, I look back and I'm like, it's terrible. But let's just say back then it wasn't hard to do the old EDM swap on the drop song. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 I know know the vibe. Yeah. We we know those commercial DJs. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, different time. Well, I I suppose that stuff's still around. Oh, definitely. I can't believe how big, like, big room and all that is still over in, like, Europe and overseas and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. To me, that's like six, seven years oh, ago, kind God. of. You know what I mean? Like it was big then, and now it's like I don't really know anyone who plays big room. No, anymore. no, I can't. Um, I can't even comprehend that it is still anything at all anymore. Mm. So I started playing that because it was what you had to do to get gigs. Yeah. But I've literally been passionate about house from day one, mm. and I had to wait for house to come in. Yeah. So I'd be again. Been, yeah. yeah. Like it, you know, it always goes in like a cycle. Yeah, a like, cycle. But it's, yeah, it's sort of like it's coming it, back. Yeah. It wasn't even. It literally was not played anywhere when I first started. Yeah. And I'm like, holy shit! I got to wait for this. Mm. And I, I never wanted to um, take that commercialized bimbo DJ approach. Yeah. I wanted to be known for music. Yeah. And could have taken that whole approach but I so was let's like, talk about that tv show that you were going to be in there <laughs> because i I'm, i feel like you uh, you might have been trying to play on that a bit in that show no i got pushed to play on that yeah yeah, yeah. so what was this sh- <laughs> i know we're just Which jumping one? to another <laughs> yeah one? i don't know the one that the, the goldie yeah yeah what was that like Tell everyone about what that was about. Um, so basically, yes, it was a sister show of what they were doing of Gord, uh, Geordie Shaw and yeah. all that sort of crap. Based on the Gold Coast. Yeah, based yeah. on the Gold Coast. The Goldie. <laughs> the Goldie. How cliche. Um, um, so, yeah, they got a they got a few of us um, Gold Coast well-known people together, you know, a couple of strippers in the mix, a couple of models in the mix, a couple of loose cannons in the mix. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, basically we're trying to run that. And because I was a DJ, they hired me as a DJ and we started filming. So we got through a few filming sessions Yeah. and the word on the street is it went – down because one of the producers may have had a crush on one of the stars of the show and he didn't want a bar of her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Jeez. yeah, that um that intro video, hey. So so did you actually cuz like, you know, the the Geordie Shore thing is like them like partying in the yeah. house and all that. Did you actually do any of that or Yeah, we um How was that then? Cuz obviously there's no footage out no, there's, they're not allowed to release the yeah, footage, yeah. the people Can who filmed it. Can you talk about it? Oh, well, you know what? Like, I don't know. Did you sign anything? Oh, uh, we you know? signed a thing, but I feel like at the end of the day, <laughs> they promoted the absolute crap out of it all over yeah. the Gold Coast. We were, before it had even started filming, we were so well known, we started filming at Platinum. Yeah. And then obviously I went on to become a resident at Platinum yeah. after that. But we started filming at Platinum and it was Typical, just gross. Yeah. So it was exactly like you would imagine. It was from, exactly. Like, on, on the yeah. other shows, yeah. Yeah. And so is that like, I don't know if you can, how much you can say, but is it like, do they really, like you said, you were like pushed to play that kind yep. of a character. So is that like, do they really tell you to or they suggest or they? Suggest. So they yeah. basically, we were not scripted, um, which was we were being ourselves, but they would give us guidelines like what they wanted us to sort of carry on like. Yeah. Um, one thing I made super clear to them was that I don't want to portray myself as that real loose, loose cannon because <laughs> I yeah. have a daughter. Yeah, yeah. So I was, I'm very mindful of yeah. how I present myself for my daughter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I'm glad that I didn't. And I'm glad that it didn't go ahead because I look back now and go, fuck, imagine her going, oh, my God, mum. And she does. She says it to me now. She's like, yeah. oh, mum. Yeah. I'm like, okay, thanks. 
<laughs> I'm cool, all right. Yeah. Just like, mum, you're not cool. You're not like, cool. That's that, you know, the, the way to make things not cool is to like get your parents to do it. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. You know, Automatically. Like, mum, get off TikTok. Yeah. Oh, you're making God. it not cool. The amount of um, TikTok, hey. Yeah. Are, I, you, are you on TikTok? No, I don't get it. Yeah. I don't like it. Um, I find it c- creepy. So it's huge and I understand like the way marketing is and all that sort of stuff, mm. but I kind of still have that old school mentality yeah. where I'm on social media because I have to be. Mm. But it, I can safely say if I didn't have to be because I wasn't yeah. doing what I'm doing, I wouldn't have it. Yeah. 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 I'm that, I like proper real life interactions. Yeah, I like meeting yeah. people yeah. in real life. Mm. So that goes back to uh, Tinder. Uh, yeah. Let's talk. You said you had some amazing story about yeah. Tinder because we've at times like to send puns to – Yep. To, if, if I can find a pun to work into someone's name on <laughs> Tinder or something, I'll do it and I'll yeah. usually screenshot it and send it to you. <laughs> That's what we were doing. <laughs> we, it was so funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what um, – what what's this story you mm. you mentioned you had some hilarious story so it's hilarious but it's also messed up yeah so long story short i actually you used to see what i do yeah like said take i was taking the piss out of it i was yeah. never using it for fun it was a novelty joke for me and then one day i actually matched someone and went oh hello how you doing and this a beautiful guy started talking and got along like a house on fire, gave numbers, started talking. Yeah. And then they they painted this huge sob story that they had a 10-year-old child that would have been 10 that yeah. passed away when they were three months old. Yeah. Right? Then Jeez, I, that's – Yeah, like holy yeah. shit. And, and I'm a real empathetic person. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I work in mental health and disability. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they've sent me this, this sob story. So they sold me from the start. And sent me confirmation, basically, that they had named a star after their son that passed away. God, yeah. Sent me the <clears throat> the gift, um, basically, sheet, you yeah, know. Yeah, the certificate. The certificate yeah, thing. Says, you own this star. Yeah. And awesome. so <laughs> I was like, oh, God, that's really pulling on the heartstrings. And then so slowly what they did was they painted this picture and then, then after that it was I was with someone after that. And she left me and cheated on me with my best friend. So my heart's bleeding for this person going, oh, my God. And then slowly I started figuring out something's not right here. You're you're wanting to meet but you never turn up and then they're sending like justification as to why they couldn't. I'm so sorry I've been called into work. Send me a screenshot of work stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, bullshit. You don't just send that like. Yeah. yeah. You're going too far yeah, to, going to prove it. way too far. And yeah. then slowly, like, every time I'd have a doubt, there was something that they could back it up with that would remove the doubt. But me being me, I should have trusted my gut feeling. So long story short, this went on for 10 months of them constantly trying to engage with me. They started um, following my social media. They started knowing where I was, who I was with, what I was wearing, yeah. and I started getting abusive messages constantly. Yeah. So this person turned out to be a complete, absolute fruit loop. Yeah. I know who it is. I've got enough evidence to nail the shit out of her. The police have yeah. confirmed there's four charges. So the, the complexity of what happens on social media, but the flip side to this story is this. I got out of her who the name was of the guy whose photos she was stealing. Uh, Because I was like, this person has an absolute right to know that this crazy bitch is using their photos and stealing their identity. So it was a chick pretending to be a guy. It was a chick pretending to be a guy. Get this. She's a failed DJ. All right. That's interesting. This is super interesting. She's a failed DJ. She's just a – she – She's quite clearly um, confused about her sexuality. And so I've gone to the level, finally nailed her. She called me over 70 times on a private number one night. Yeah. And then what what nailed it was that she tried to FaceTime me because she was pissed. Yeah. And it come up with her iCloud account and it was like, bingo. It was exactly who I'd done research and figured out. 
this is yeah. her. So I've bribed her, said to her, I won't report you if you give me the name of the guy that you have been taking his photos, you apologise and you move on and just yeah. stop. So she's given me the name. So I've added the guy on social media, started messaging him, but wanted to make sure it was him, not her. Yeah. Because holy shit. Jesus, yeah. The amount of fake profiles she's made of this guy is insane. Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, you name it. Yeah. Tracked him down. I'd booked my flights to go to Melbourne and randomly, just out of the blue, that was me sitting at work going, you know what, I'm going to Melbourne this week. And then got booked for the gig. Started conversing with this guy, got his number out of him, called him. Didn't expect him to answer because I'm thinking in the back of my head subconsciously this is going to be her still. Yeah. <laughs> he answers the phone and I'm like, oh, what do I do? I've got to tell him. Holy shit. Come out with it all. Told him, I'm like, I'm so sorry for flirting with you. The reason I've tried to contact you is wait for it, brace yourself. Someone's been using your photos and stolen your identity and catfishing on Tinder. Yeah. Anyway, he was just completely obviously shocked. Yeah. So this girl has harassed the shit out of me to the point of mental abuse mm. that I couldn't even open my social media without being abused. Jeez. Yeah, like it's Rough. been Dam Damo, business partner, yeah. he's seen what's going on. It's been horrendous. How long is this being like is this being like recent? Yep. Yeah. So on the weekend, he and I met the guy. Yeah. I met to show him everything. Yeah. Turns out he's a closet producer. A closet. A I've never heard that term. A bedroom. A, closet. A, closet. a bedroom producer. Yeah. yeah. And I'm thinking, oh, well, you know, I was like, whatever, send me something. And dead set, he sent me this track and it is fire. Yeah, sick. I'm like, what the actual. Yeah. And yeah. so I sent the track to Damo. I'm like, Damo, you've got to listen to this track. Didn't give him any context of the backstory. Yeah, yeah. Damo's like, this is so damn good. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to sign his track. <laughs> this is, yeah. So crazy, crazy it's psych the psychopath. World, the world's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. So I've ended up in Melbourne last week, met this guy. He's an amazing producer and he's an amazing person. Yeah. So now that's good for me because I'm like, okay, I don't relate to him as the psycho anymore. Yeah. And he's... And it's got a happy ending. It's got a happy ending for him, <laughs> for us. Yeah, like, yeah. we're going to sign his music. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that's the best backstory to a signing a track ever. Wait, do you think that moment in time has ever happened before? I don't know. I've never heard anything that wild. No. No. Only would happen to me, though. Yeah, that's it? what I was going to say. It, it would only happen to you. Yeah, yeah. Like, stitch up of the century goes to Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't believe that at all. That's so, yeah. that's so wild. I know. It's super, super weird. Yeah, just the old the old Tinder. Yeah. Man. I was devastated when I found out that he was a crazy female who's He was a crazy female. Yeah. He, it wasn't him. I was yeah. devastated. I was like, oh damn, this guy is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she, well, she she knew what to say to you. Yeah, because she's a female. Yeah. So she she's had to play on it. Yeah. Yeah. She's psychotic. Yeah. Like not right at all. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I'm going to the police still. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully she Comes a farm and sorts her oh, life out. Oh, she needs. She honestly needs to be institutionalised. Mm. She's a fruit loop. So yeah, yeah. that is. Um, but that's a crazy story. <laughs> stranger danger. How did? How do you end up with these stories and situations? Oh my god, so, I don't know. Yeah, I really don't know. I feel like um, the more you put yourself out there, the more you attract. Definitely. So yeah. So basically, apart from that crazy person, yeah. I've stayed well away from males <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. So, what about, um, so let's talk a little bit about your DJing. Um, like we've talked about how you've got your first gig and stuff, but yeah, how did we progress to where you are today? Let's get some more beers. Yeah, let's get some more beers. Um, so pretty much, look, I've been, I've always been super, super serious about music. I've... I've just constantly practiced and practiced and practiced. I started. I'll open it for you. Thank you. I started putting myself out there essentially, um, but sticking within my guidelines, sticking within my moral compass. Um, only I used to take you know random gigs. When we when we start DJing, we think we've got to play everywhere. Yeah. And we don't. 
it's actually probably the one thing we all do wrong. Yeah. So I started on that little train where I'd take everything and anything. Yeah. And then I realised I wasn't getting um, – I wasn't on the path I wanted to be with music, so I did enter your shot yep. in 2014. 14, yeah, yep. Yep. And that was my that was my um my networking calendar, so to speak. I thought, you know what? I'm gonna use this platform, even though it saturates the market, so to speak. I wanted to use it to meet the right people. And yep. that's kind of where I started turning. Um so was this the wild card because you'd already been playing? No, or was you in the main yeah, I was visible? in the main. <laughs> 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 so you just like mm. just lied your way into the main card. Didn't everyone? Um, <laughs> quite. Well, a few. I got stitched up by um, uh, Matt in Cinity. Oh yeah, not on purpose. Yeah, like, he I didn't love know. Matt. And yeah, because I was there super early. I was. We were like the first ones in line. So I was like. Yeah, cool. Like, we'll just rock up early. We'd already been mixing at someone's house and drinking and stuff. So yeah. we were pretty lit. And um, go in, sit down with Matt. Um, and I'm like, oh, what? what's the difference between the – because I didn't know. I was like, what's the difference between the main card and the wild card or whatever? And he's like, oh, I don't – not really sure because it was like his first time doing it. It oh. was quite new. I was one of the first people in there. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, I don't know, but the prizes are better for the main one. And I was like, oh, oh. I'll enter that then. <laughs> and so I like, put it down in that. Meanwhile, I've got down like underneath it that I've played like at a festival oh. and I've played these clubs and stuff. Like, So yeah. obviously they would have just looked at it and gone, um, um, no. <laughs> yeah. Like, so, yeah. You've definitely been experienced. Anyway, Matt. I still love you. <laughs> Matt, so do you know what? I'd already played a gig for him. What, like, what year was that? Oh, I think I think it was either 2014 or 2015. It was around So I like, have to look back. It was No, was he it? was he was um he was a selector in 2014. But so that he, might have been the year, yeah. He selected me to go through. Yeah. Oh, well, maybe. Yeah, it I don't know. It must have been before that. Yeah, I don't know. Because he was. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll, I'll look through the archive. Yeah. That's Facebook. But... Oh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook's the archive. Yeah, I'll just look in my previous files. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, no, Matt is the one who selected me. Yeah. And he always says, just remember. <laughs> just, just remember. I did your solid. Yeah. I did your solid there, Sam. <laughs> yeah. He's a legend. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've talked to him so many times about coming on because, like, when I first started doing stuff in Brisbane, um, with like the addicts crew, which is breakbeat and stuff. Yeah. Um, him and oh, Kate, Caitlin. Yeah. Is his wife. Um, yeah. In Kate. C- in Cine- Kate. Yeah. In Cinity. Cinity DJs. Yeah. They yeah. they were they played for us, so I met them them there and um, yeah. And then that's. I remember when they were their little duo. Oh, they were so cute. Cute. I hey. mean, they're still cute. Oh yeah. But still, I'm still Devra. I didn't go to their their surprise wedding. Oh no, invite. Well, it was a, it was just a party. Oh, was it? And, and and I was like, oh, I, I'm like, oh, I don't know if I could make it, you know, just like not thinking it was anything. Like, yeah. I was sort of just like, I probably like, if I knew they were going to get married at oh, it, I would have turned right. up. But like, it what was a just rude like, guy. yeah. What a chee up! You're so rude. <laughs> Now, now, sorry, I, I, I totally changed. Now I'm always like, yeah, I'll come, like yeah. to anything. And yeah. Like, yeah, who's party? getting married today? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but they that was yeah crazy. They just they just went. All well, their friends and that were there, and they just went. We're getting married. Oh wow, that's How probably cool a good that? way to do it. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, that's a good way. Um, yeah. me and my ex husband, our wedding was the wedding was formal, but the uh, celebration was not. <laughs> That doesn't surprise me. No, it doesn't, does it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, th- so the your shot, um, you did that, and you so, sort of to make connections and things. Yeah, and did stuff that, like that to which make is what that's brilliant for. That a hundred percent. That's exactly what that thing's for. Yeah. yeah. So pretty much utilize that as a platform to network, make connections, and then that's when I started getting a little bit more recognized, and still tried to maintain the integrity. Had a couple of dodgy managers along the way. And by dodgy, I mean oh, yeah. real dodgy. I remember hearing about something. Yeah. Are you telling us about overseas one or something? Yeah, something overseas. America, yeah. Like they're just, they'll latch onto anything and everything that looks like a marketable brand. Um, so I had one guy that was trying to sell me as that whole bikini model. He used to um, manage Chloe Teray, who's a Playboy model. Um, and he was putting me up with that sort of shit. Yeah. And to be perfectly honest, I used to be that blonde Gold Coast, but. That's not actually what I was trying to achieve. Yeah. So pretty quickly I 
ditched all that crap. I was like, no, nah, don't want to go down that path. Yeah. And then not sustainable either. No, like, look, don't get me wrong. Everyone has their place in the industry. Yeah. You need those people to pull those big crowds and to be those pretty girls. Good on them. Yeah. But. If you're in it for the long time and you're in it for the passion of music and wanting to make music and create music, mm. you'll do it from the for the right reasons from the start. Yeah. So that's what I've always tried to separate myself from. Slowly started getting more into that real underground, housey yep. scene mm. and set my eye on the prize and basically have focused on that since. Yeah. And just only taken the right gigs, the right with the right people. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah, and um, I guess you could say my main focus is one Australian music. We have such a damn good scene. Oh yeah, definitely. and I feel like we're finally getting traction, getting recognition. Two, I also want to pave the way for women in music in Australia. Yeah, um, we've got some really, really good talented females that don't get recognised purely because of the fact that they don't take the marketing approach. Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So I mean, I'm trying mean. to do that and that's what the whole aim is of Sorta of Kind of Music is giving people that wouldn't necessarily have an opportunity yep. to get music out there and get music heard mm -hmm. the platform to do it. Yeah. So, yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Trying and to... it's going well, so. Yeah, we're doing well. Yeah. 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 And you're focused. right, like there's so many, like I can't really speak for other cities because I don't know their scenes as well as yeah. our scene, but the girls here like probably better than the guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Rosie Kate. Yeah, yeah, Rosie's awesome. It's like Rosie's amazing. Yeah. She's so damn good. Um. I love playing with her, just love her music that's been coming out as well. She's amazing. Um, Beverly Thrills, like I didn't even know who she was as a DJ and I had the privilege of playing alongside her at Remix Hotel and she's such a damn good house DJ. And it's like, holy crap, like there's so yeah. many really good underrated females mm. that just slowly get stuck between the cracks because they're not jumping around on a stage. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I've just had a focus on being known for that reason. Yeah. Mm. And so there's sort of kind of music, like, uh, you know, I, I I spoke to Damo. Yeah. Um, you were meant to come on before Damo. I but know. We've, we've, this is, we've tried to organise this for a long time. I don't know. Over you know, a year, yeah, I reckon. Yeah, I reckon. Timing has um, never worked, uh, has it? No. Nah. And, I mean, it doesn't help that we live in, you know, a little bit of a distance yeah. away and we're yeah. both so busy. Like you're always doing so much as well. Yeah, work, work. You've got work. a daughter as well. Like, yeah. you know, you got to you got to do the, the mum thing. That's it. <laughs> so, <laughs> And I but, work a full-on corporate job as well. Yeah, yeah. But like so th talk about, let's talk a little bit about the label and yep. how it started with Demo. Like, you know, what, how did that, that sort of, you know, partnership start and, and how did it come about? Uh, so Damo and I have known each other for quite a long time. Yeah. Um, oddly enough, Damo went to school with my ex-husband. So he there you go. he knew him. Um, and then he also used to DJ with someone who I knew. And we were in this little weird crowd and we individually, separately separated from that crowd because it was not a, let's just say it was that toxic lifestyle that we didn't want to be a part of. Yeah. And then Damo and I quickly realised that we we were both in the music for the right reason and we were wanting, we were thinking more than local. And just through conversation, he was like, yeah, I've got all these ideas. And I, I had an ex-partner who's quite high up in the music industry. Uh, he produces for Universal and Sony and has had big success and he sat me down a couple of times and was like, Sarah, if you want to get somewhere, I'm going to help you. I'm going to tell you what you can do, but you've got to do it yourself. Yeah. And I was like, fine. Long story short, he and I didn't work out. We're still friends. Yeah. But I took all the advice he gave me. Mm. Met Damo. Damo had the same ideas, same moral compass, same yep. values. And then he wanted to start a label and I wanted to start something. But we just went, oh, how do we do this? And then one day he was like, hey, I've got an idea. Do you want to start a label together? And I was like, you know what? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. let's do this. Yeah, yeah. And we, to be perfectly honest, we kind, we knew what to do. We knew the fundamentals. We were two children, I'll say, 
because we were very clueless as well. So we've fumbled our way through the industry. Yeah. But we've both got the same goal in mind. We've got the same work ethic and we've got the same moral compass and we've got the same goal to help everyone in the industry yeah. be, be able to be heard. Yeah. And so we did come up with a plan that um, we'll start utilising some of my music first. Yeah. And just purely based on the fact that because I do have quite a lot of contacts everywhere, i.e., you know, end up in Melbourne and just playing. Yeah. So we've utilised the right contacts the right way and just being friendly. Yeah. And that's how we started. Yeah. And then we've sat down, we've done a business plan and now we're really super focused. Yeah. Like um, the plans we've got for our five-year goal, it's, we want to lead the way. We want to be like alongside Hot Sunday Records, like yeah. mad respect to Christian. Yeah. I feel like he's absolutely yeah, he's killing, killing it. it. Yeah. yeah. When the pandemic hit, so it was just like Hot Sunday Records everywhere, everywhere. like doing all this yeah. stuff. And I was like, this is awesome. Yeah. yeah. Now, Christian's Big awesome. Yeah. He, he's such a legend. Hot Sunday's killing it. Um, I went and watched his first gig on the Gold Coast. Oh, cool. Before he'd even owned Hot Sunday. And I remember he sent me one of his songs. That was cool. Yeah, nice. Yeah. So I've got that from back before he started. But um, I feel like if we all support each other the right way and we're not in competition. Yeah, definitely. That's how it works. Yeah. So one thing that's a very apparent on the Gold Coast is the competitive competitiveness. Yeah. And one thing Damo and I have done is gone, we don't want to be a part of that. We just want to knuckle down, bums up, do what we've got to do, do the hard yards. Yeah. And we've been lucky enough to have some traction and some yeah. success. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely like my whole vibe as well. Mm. I'm all about people should be helping each other yep. and stuff like that. I know. There's, yeah, there's, there's so much, you know, it's that sort of people have that like famine mindset of that there's not enough to go around. Yeah. There is. There is. There is enough. If you, yeah. But at the end of the day too, um, 95% of the population can only see themselves. It's the yeah. 5% that get further yeah. because the 5% have a growth mindset. Yeah. Exactly. So if you're too busy worrying about being king shit playing in your local club, yeah. that's fine. You've got that place. But if you don't have the foresight to think and grow bigger, then yeah. you're not going to think and grow rich. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's it. what it comes down to. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right, let's have a quick break. Yes. And then we'll come back and we'll we'll keep going because we've got so much more to talk about <laughs> still. So, yeah, awesome. All right, we'll see you guys soon. I think we've started again. Yeah. We've started. <laughs> we've started. We've started. Um, we're what, on. <laughs> what's – um. Yeah, we're back, I guess. Hi. We'll see if we put that little bit in there <laughs> while we were talking about Hi. stuff. Um, so, you know, production then. Mm. Like I sort of for a long time I knew you, but I didn't really know you produced. Mm. But how did you get into production? I pretty much just had to start. I knew that I needed to start and I've had a, a previous influence yep. teach me some little tips and tricks and ways. Yep. And I kept it in my backhand basically. Yeah. Um, it's something that I choose to do on the DL and then I finally started releasing and everyone yeah. was going, oh, yeah, crap. Yeah, well, I didn't know you produced music and then, yeah. Yeah, and then all of a sudden you were like, oh, yeah, releasing this tune. And I was like, oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. So and then it's also good because we've got a proper studio set up at Damo's house. Yeah. We've got a studio room and that's where the, ma the magic happens and we make some music and – Yeah. Yeah. How, how long ago did you start learning then? Uh, that would have been – start, you know, figuring it out. Oh, I first had Ableton in 2016. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 15, 16. Yeah. Yep. So it's taken me a few years and whatnot, but I have a music ear. Yeah. So, and I'm quite a nerd, yep. so to speak. So it wasn't too hard for me yeah, to pick it up. Yep. Most people that, one thing I've noticed is pretty much anyone can produce music. 90% of people just buy loot packs. Yeah. Which is but a bit of a the insult. The problem with that, I think, is that if you have an idea to make something and you're using loops and stuff, you can't make that idea. No, you can't. It's not your you own creativity. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like then what happens is when you 
you either want to create your own sound or how you want to sound. Yeah. You either can't do it no. because you're relying on other things. Or if you want to collab with someone yep. and they're like, oh, we need to, I want it to be like this. Well, you can't do that. No, you can't you don't do have that. The skills to do it. No. So, so I think that's where people come undone. Like it's, I, I can understand people using, you know, loop packs and all that kind of stuff just to make music and maybe to learn to yeah. start out or whatever but but I it's crazy it's, the amount yeah. of people who are quite high up in charts and that's all they've done oh yeah it's insane it blows me away um the, but is it sustainable then no, like, you know, God, they, no. They, yeah it doesn't they don't end up continually no. keeping on moving up and, and doing better or, or anything i was having a chat last night so i was having a chat with kane rayner and mobin master yeah. i told him to move up here <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Well, Kane's living in Darwin and M- Mobin's probably always going to be down in Melbourne now because he works down there. But it was quite funny. Kane and I's conversation, we were talking about the manoeuvre of certain DJs into house now, yeah, tech house, and won't mention any names, but a very well-known bounce DJ, EDM DJ playing at Porn & Co., and we were like, how? But that's the that's what's going on is like the sustainable side of the music that they're playing is not there. So what they're doing is trying to adapt. Mm. And I don't know how I feel about that because then yeah. you, you get people who bust their ass off and who are super talented but because yeah. they haven't got that name as that marketed person, yeah. they don't get the opportunity at such great – venues. Yeah. And then yeah, so it's quite interesting. Um I feel like COVID changed the industry overnight. Yeah. I mean, we've always had that dominating side of the industry and the big wigs and the big people. Yeah. But I feel like COVID has made it more apparent. Um and especially with people producing tech house now, it's become such a flooded saturated market mm-hmm. whereas before we were known as the weirdos. Yeah. Yeah. We I was Constantly like, oh, God, she's the, yeah, she's quite into the underground weird shit. Yeah. But now it's become commercialised. Yeah. So it's just um, funny watching the way producers are changing and diversifying to stay relevant. Yeah. But I think that's exactly sort of what you said is exactly why you need to make music that's your own individual Mm -hmm. and not use the lip packs because it's so oversaturated. Yeah. Like that's probably why I haven't released much music recently is that, I don't want to just release a track that sounds like a standard every tech other, house Every track. other track. I want something that stands out, that I love, that is me, that's yeah. different and, you know. You I, definitely do have your own unique oh, side you. of, yeah, you. with your last ones. I did, remember I told you I put it in my chart? Yeah, yeah. So obviously that. that's I all right. That. <laughs> I'll always support, you know, I've always got mad love for you. Yeah. Um. But that's the that's the sort of thing we're doing with sort of kinder. Yeah, so we're signing uniqueness. We're not yeah. signing um, commercialized. Yeah, because it's like it's, there's a million of those tracks out there. Yeah, and that's why I think it's almost it's almost hard to find music that I want to play. Yeah, because there's yep. so much noise. Oh, like, so you know, much there's noise. So, there's just so much music out there, and it's like, well, I don't really like that. Sound, you yeah. know, like it's like it's it just sounds, very repetitive. It sounds like very... the last track, you know. There's a certain kind of tech house that I kind of don't really enjoy. Yep, because it all sounds the same. It does. Yeah. It all sounds the same. And it's all right to maybe put one of those songs in. Yeah, but not a whole set. Of no, that kind of like vibe. Yeah, well, it's. You know? just, I don't know how to even describe that vibe. The but. crowd gets bored. Yeah. And it is very it does become boring. So you got to when you're playing a house set, I sort of feel like you've got to keep keep the flow going, keep you've got to ride the wave with house. You've got to start with a little bit of disco and you go into some funky vocally and then you can drop into some heavier bass house, but then you yeah. bring it back to vocally. Yeah. Like you've got to keep creativity through the sets, yeah. just like producing music. Yeah. You can't keep making the same crap and expecting the same result. Yeah. So with a lot of my music, you'll notice that it's all very different. Yeah. Like my mind, for example, holy crap, when Damo and I made that and I did the vocals for that, yeah. that that ended up on a different journey that you kind of go, whoa. Yeah. Every time it's like someone hears it, they go, holy shit, that's trippy. Yeah. Like what were you on that day? And I'm like, <laughs> fucking good vibes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, day for it, it's – 
we couldn't even get a genre from it. So a lot of yeah. curators were so confused about it because it's got a bit of a tech house, but we've got electro elements through it. Mm. So I created a new genre and said it's tech row. Yeah. Tech row. <laughs> tech row. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So that's, um, I feel like that's the focus that personally I've got is with music. It's not about a specific style known for a genre. It's whatever is vibing at the time. Yeah. And like, you know, I've sat there some days and I've looked at Damon. I'm like, oh, my God, I want the lightsaber out of Star Wars. Zoom, zoom. So I've yeah. literally like we've gone through Google, fucking cut it, sampled it out and all this sort of yeah, shit. Yeah. You know, like finding your unique um, sounds yeah. is. Yeah, Allegedly, the- they did not use any copyrighted material Never. from Star Wars. Never once. Disney, right? Disney. <laughs> they, they did not use it. Disney. I think Disney owns it now, don't they? Yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah. So, That's but- alleged. Alleged. They recreated that sound. We did, actually. We did. <laughs> Created our own sample pack. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but, like, you know what I mean? Like, you kind of – you get an idea in your head and you want to roll with it. You can't get yeah. that in a sample pack. No, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so. exactly. I, I even wanted to do, like, a sample pack. Um, I was going to go because I work at a school and yep. it was going to be called – um, sounds of the schoolyard. Oh, see. And I was going to just like, you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And like just get like basketball and p- throw it on a roof and record That's it. Cool. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like just get all different samples from things I could do around school. Yeah. Oh, what's his name? Um, re- the guy who he was going to come to Australia and he wears his fucking robe. Mark uh, Rabilla. Mark, yeah, yeah. He is amazing yeah. how he just creates his little, like obviously samples it's loops, but yeah. it's. Him just making his sounds by stupid sounds through his mouth and all that sort of yeah. stuff and tapping and all that sort of crap. Yeah. He's so talented. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's super – he's one of the people that I've wanted to see for ages. Yeah. Bought a ticket to go watch him and then COVID. Yeah. COVID can just get out of the town now. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, well, at least we're doing all right up here, really. Oh, We've obviously. been pretty like, – like, Oh, yeah. Queensland, out of the whole – like – Yeah. Out of the whole world, probably like – the luckiest place to be. Do you know what was amazing? So said guy that um, was the guy behind the stalker, the yeah. real guy. The real guy, yeah. So he says to me on the weekend, he tells me this joke. He goes, do you know why Queensland is named a, a beer called Forex? I said, why? And he goes, because you can't spell beer. <laughs> in my head, I'm like, and look at how fucked you are all doing down yeah. there right now. <laughs> we can't spell beer, but we can beat COVID. Yeah. No, yeah. we're doing really well. It's, yeah. um, and that's the other thing, like not to touch on Clubhouse again, but when I talk to people overseas, yeah, it blows their mind when I tell them what we can do here. Yeah. They're just like, are yeah. you serious? You can, you can go out like. To and, a place and yeah. drink a beer. You can talk. You can yeah. be in, interacting. You can go, you can go places mm. like, and it just blows their mind like that we can actually go out and do those things. So, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty crazy. But let's not get on to COVID. No. No, to- no. no more COVID talk. would rather not. But I tell you what, there's something I've been – I've read a few times from um, quite a few different people in the industry. 2022, I reckon it's going to be the year for music. Yeah. I reckon there is going to be some absolute fire music coming through and I feel like the music industry is just going to come out with a bang. Mm. It's going to be that bang moment that yeah. we all well, I know appreciate that, it. I know for a fact yeah. that a lot of big artists around the world are working on taking their live shows to the next level. Yeah. They're using this time to create 3D rendered you know, yeah, stuff sick. To, yeah. to, to really actually have so that when they can tour it's like, Holy shit. Like, Produce this an is actual amazing. show. Yeah, yeah, an incredible show. Um, and the same thing with like music, you know, like a lot of artists maybe aren't releasing their like no. best tracks because they're like, why I can't play them? People can't play them at no. clubs. So they're like sitting on like music. So it will be interesting to see when yeah. things open up, what music is out there and what people push and put out. Like, Well, to that's see. what Kane and I were talking about last yeah. night. Um, mm. So he has his contacts as well and he's – talks to quite a few different people overseas in LA and whatnot at the moment. Yeah. And, yeah, they are not releasing their music because they're like, well, no one can play them in clubs. Yeah. So that's that's where it comes from too. And it, I had that epiphany driving on the way up here. I was like, 2022 is going to be a huge year for music. We're going to hear it all. As long as we can open it up by then. Like, I think we will. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, think, I, I, I don't know. 
Have I you hope so. have you noticed that the the care factor of people has started to drop? Yeah, but that's here. It is here. We've got you know, you know I, I don't you know, know, know about how it is in the states. You or, know you can travel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like this is what I mean. I feel like um we only hear what the media feeds in our faces, but you can still travel. Yeah. If you want to spend an absolute arm and a leg and, yeah. you know, sell a kidney on the black yeah. market, but you can still travel. Yeah. And what I think will happen is the fact that people are catching on and going, you know what, this can't possibly keep going on. Yeah. So the care factor of the general public will start coming yeah. into play and people will start not um compromising and uh, obliging to what we're being yeah. fed. Yeah. The only thing is I've talked to the people overseas and, like, it's pretty bad. In some Over places. there. Yeah. We're very here, here, here it's fine. Like, you know, we can travel all around here and do things. Like, it's it's kind of normal here. Oh, But, like, is. over in, you know, you talk to people over in America and stuff and they're yeah. like, what, you, you go to a bar? You go to you a go bar? You go to a restaurant to eat food? What? See, it's, but it's crazy because. Like, yeah. There's, there are people that I chat to over there. Um, there are. Pro BMX, a pro BMX rider, and a couple of the crusty demons and all that sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And they're living their lives. Yeah. So it's some people of, are. Yeah. It de- I feel like it depends on the town, the suburb, where they the are, the local community, the community around yeah. them. Yeah. Like some places here, you could walk out and you get crucified if you even so much as think of coughing. Yeah. Whereas normally down down on the coast. There's a whole of zero fucks given. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <Everyone's> <laughs> zero. Like, who cares? Who cares? Yeah. We, are we going to night jar tonight? Yes, yeah, sick. All right. Yeah. We'll see you there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do take it for granted, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. Um, it's yeah, it's pretty apparent when I've been in these other rooms talking to people. Yeah. Overseas. They're just like, what? Like, yeah. you've got gigs. People are playing. Like, <laughs> I, was, I, I actually kind of flexed on Dead Mouse a bit. Oh. It, it was like they were talking about, oh, he's like, oh, I'm stuck in my house, like all this. And I was like, I just played three gigs last week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sorry about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just so you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, Dead yeah. Mouse means nothing now. No yeah. jokes. <laughs> You're only as big as your last gig. Yeah. Well, but yeah. Anyway, it's interesting that um that whole thing. But yeah, I want to talk about your your work because yep. Um, you know, you do you work in the sort of you know the support works the yeah. area and that and that's amazing. And and to be honest, so many people I've well a few people I know in the music industry do that. You know, yeah, like Jordan Art Supplies. He works. Yep. does a similar thing. Um, oh, does he? I didn't know Jordan did. Yeah, yeah, he does. I will yeah. never forget Jordan being super drunk in the back of my car. After a week one time, yep. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, but, yeah, so he, he does, you know, um, you know, disability support work as yeah, well. Yeah, right. And I mean, it sort of matches up well with music because a lot of music is on the weekends at night. Oh, yeah. And then during the week it's like, well, what do you do? And yeah. So it's like how did you get into that work? And, and um, that? So to be perfectly honest, back in the day I never, ever, ever in a million years could see myself doing that. My mum's been in the industry for 12 years. She's been telling me for a very long time, Sarah, you need to get into support work just because of the empathetic person that I am. Um, I was channeling a lot of my empathy side into toxic relationships. So trying to fix people, trying to fix people subconsciously, (laughs) not even even realizing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So basically Shit hit the fan. I had to move up to mum and dad's. They were living in Bribey Island. Mum was working for a company called CPL. And so she went, Sarah, now's the time. If you want a job, it's good money. Here you go. And she's like, I can feed you the path. You go do it. So I started doing on like in-home support work and I loved it. So I really realised that the bad side and the not so nice side that we take for granted, i.e. personal care. I always had this um, this side in me that I was like, there's no way I could do that for someone else. Yeah. And then when you actually start doing it, you actually just become so tolerant to it that you don't care about that, yeah. that you only see the reward factor of it yeah. and you're actually helping people every day. So I started off with that. I then... Um, had to leave CPL because they were not giving me enough hours. I transferred to Brisbane and it was the start of COVID, so I shot myself in the foot. But every every door that's essentially half closing is an opening to another door. Yep. That led me to the company that I'm with now, United Disability Care. Um, 
the general manager for service delivery interviewed me. They were yep. so short staffed and he jumped in to start interviewing uh, as opposed to just HR. In the middle of the interview, I applied for just a normal support work position. He looked at me and he goes, what's your background before that? And I'm like, well, I've always been a manager or a business development, yeah. corporate sort of shit. And um, he literally in the middle, he goes, well, you're not going to come here and be a support worker. He's like, no matter what, you've got a job with us, but I've got something that I want you to do Yeah, that's a bit bigger. Yeah. Um, turns out that there was a brand new model of care, had never been done before, and it's a concierge type service. So um, in a high rise here, residential um, building, they've got 10 apartments that they gut out, specialised disability accommodation, yep. and they put us in an apartment and we have a support worker on site and they get to call us so that we can go to them, but not a institute that is where they're all put into a home together, away from the public. Yeah. They get to live in Brisbane, in the middle of the valley, in great accessible areas. That's awesome. It's so cool. Yeah. And honestly, it's changed people's lives. Yeah. So I was very lucky enough to start the very first Queensland model for the NDIS basically. Awesome. And that, um, that led me to build a huge relationship with a company called Summer Housing. They're an amazing um, SDA. They're quite large. And then that led me to becoming a support coordinator. Yep. So I started off a year and a half ago as yeah. a support worker. Yeah, you've shot right up. It's, but just it's gone, like, boom. It's like every every month or week it's like, yeah. oh, Sarah's doing something extra. Like, you yeah. know, taking a step up. Yeah. Uh, I look, to be perfectly honest, one thing I'll say is that I think it comes down to the fact that I'm, I love what I'm doing and I'm yeah. super passionate about it. And I feel like if you can, um, even though, yes, we get paid for it, we're actually really making a genuine difference mm. to people with mental health and disability. Yeah. And some of these people, they get stared at down the street, but they're 100% cognitively fine in the head. Can yeah. you imagine what it would feel like, you or I, to have mm. an accident and become a paraplegic, but we still are normal in the head? And yeah. then everyone's staring at you. Yeah. So to be able to make their lives better, get them in the right support network and all that sort of stuff, it it actually is really um, feel-good work. Yeah, definitely. So and combine that with the fact that I'm, 100% goal orientated. Yep. Everything I do, I can't, I'm not a nine, 95% or I don't want to just go to work every day. Yeah. Every day it's I go to work. Um, yeah. yeah. That's me too. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it gets me in trouble sometimes yeah. too. But it's. But yeah. But does it? Yeah, well, no, I guess not. But yeah. It only gets you in trouble to people who don't see bigger. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, there's sometimes when I like, I, I know that like when I, when I want to try something yeah. or do something, it's like. I go all in. Yep. It's like when I wanted to grow tomatoes, I didn't just grow one tomato. I had <laughs> 10 varieties of tomatoes and, you know. But and, were and they good tomatoes? They were tomatoes. Well, there you go. But then, but then like a year later, I'm like, man, I've got like all this equipment to grow tomatoes. What am I doing? Tomatoes. Like, no, it, was, it was genuinely tomato yeah, as well. Yeah. Um, and I even That's like, what I call them too. No, I'm joking. <laughs> it was actually tomatoes. Yeah. I had. That's insane. Yeah. So I don't do things in, in half. No, yeah. I know. And that's why you're doing well with your podcast now Thanks. and, you know, finally getting to um, be recognized for the hard work that you put in. Yeah. Which is super awesome. It's all in. It's all in yeah. on nothing. Well, what's the point? Hey, yeah. if you're not going to be all in, yeah. why half ass shit? Mm, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That's, We're on the same page yeah. here. <laughs> Definitely. I I don't understand why people just um, exist. Mm. We don't know how we got here. We don't know why we're here. At least make the opportunity of what we're doing here. Yeah. And that's why I always, like, I've really pushed in the last year for people to just, like, have a crack. Start. Literally. Try it. Do like, something. Do your best. What's the worst that happened is you fail. Yeah. But at so the end what? of the day. do something else. Every no is a step to a yes. Yep. Every no is literally a knock on another door to a yes. Mm -hmm. People get so defeated but they don't realise that they could be knocking on that one extra door. They turn around and walk away but that's the door that opens. Yeah. So if you're doing things with passion how do I say this? Reward comes from passion mm. and consistency. People think that money 
is what finds success, yeah, but it's not. It's not. No. it's not. If you're if you're waking up every single bloody day, you're going to do something you love. You're surrounded by good people, and you're breathing happiness and positivity. I feel like you've already won at life. Yeah, and then money will naturally come to yeah. you. Literally, that's it. yeah. That's how that's I, look how at I life. feel as well. Yeah, yeah exactly. And now, and now I've got a studio. You know, this look at this awesome yeah. studio and this stuff, and it's like I don't know how this happened. <laughs> like, well, you well just, I do. I you do. just kept working towards it. Yeah, I it. do. But it's like I like if if it was like five years ago, I wouldn't have been like I'd, I'll have this cool space and I'll be yeah. doing all this stuff. Like it's just you you do you know one foot in front of the other. That's it. Keep you just going. Keep going. Keep going. Doing and just working on things and and you know you get there in the end. So well, that's and that's um something that we're trying to do with our label. So we're not trying to be just a label that puts out music the way that um Damo and I are looking at things is we actually want to grow the people we sign we're not signing them for a one hit off you go yeah where the the commitment we want from them is that they're dedicated passionate and we're going to nurture them provide them a platform help them grow individually and then guide them as well without the outside influences that can be shit in the industry yeah that's it and and that's how you really you know, form great relationships and, and that's how you get people, you know, like actually have a good working relationship with yeah. people. It's not about the one off. No. Give me some, I want, you know, a transaction of this. It's, it's you work together and, and then that's how you do something really great. That's it. Yeah. Cause if you, if you, you know, I, yeah. Even in like business stuff that I do with people, people are always like, uh, what can we ask for? What can we get? What can we do? Yeah, it's, it's all like, about take, take, take. Yeah, it's like, no, 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 no. No. Let's do this with these people, build a really good relationship and yeah. do something really cool. Yeah. And then they're going to want to keep working with you. That's it. And then it. they're going to want to give you stuff. They're going to want to, you know, like it's a It's a mutual, it. exta- uh, mutual exchange of kindness. Yeah. And then naturally it creates a positive flow, which naturally creates – um, good karma. Yeah. So what you put out is what you get in. Yeah. If you take from people, you're not going to get anything. Yeah. But if you give, people are willing naturally to give because they're like, you know what, actually we worked with this person at the time. Yeah. They did this. So, you know what, let's give them a go. Yeah. Um, so like speaking of that with what we're doing, like just Jacks. Yes. Jackson. He is prime example. He's so talented. Do you want another beer? I know oh, you've got to drive. Yeah, that's all right. It's been a couple of hours you know, I had breakfast today. Um, yeah. Please, please have the opener. So Jackson is um, someone we've we've taken under our belt, um, and like with Morgan too, we didn't just release Heiser. Whoop. Whoop, we've got a squirter. Um, That's all right. I'll clean it up. How did that happen? I think I knocked it over before. Is that why you left it? <laughs> um, Heiser as well. We've chosen to release a few of his songs fuck he's dropping some fire at the moment too yeah. uh, but jackson where i'm actually going to be managing him yeah as he's are. <laughs> yeah so jackson's 25 it's got so much potential and can already see the outside influences trying to you know latch take in advantage. take advantage yeah, yeah. grab on you know we've been we're djs we understand what goes wrong in the yeah. industry so it's only after you've seen it for a while like probably we have like Ooh. when you like people 10 I, years i see some people ne- like even now like i see some people who are doing like awesome and amazing and and i just see what they're doing and what's happening and i'm like I'm a bit worried about you yep. you know like yep. a bit worried like i just i think that yeah yeah there's little things that you see it's not until you've been around for a little while that you understand or you see those you things. can crystal yeah. clear see Cause it because you've seen the that play out with other people oh. over the years. I always say there's people that are way more talented than I am. Yep. Way better DJs, way better producers, way better everything, marketing, everything. But they're not here anymore. No. You know, they're not doing it anymore yeah. because they either lost the passion or they did the wrong thing or they you Or know, they got they, taken for a ride. Yeah, 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 exactly. Or something happened, but you know, and yeah, it's it's, it's what happens. You see it. And the um the undercutting in the industry yeah. is just horrible. So but we're trying to remove all that, not focus on the other stuff. We're just all about focusing on the good, bringing out the good. Yeah. Um, so the level that I'm at with our our label is that we're trying to personally develop our artists. Yeah. Trying to grow them, give them that growth mentality, that growth mindset. 
let them realise that the world is limitless. Yeah. And that's actually the goal. We're not here to just um, say, hey, guys, here's, here's your platform, release your music. It's like, yeah. what do you want? Tell us what you want yeah. and let's make it happen. Mm. Let's put a plan in place. Let's um, guide you. And yeah. if you want to take it, run with it. Yeah. So that's that's what we're trying to achieve yeah. and that's the goal we're going. And I feel like we've chosen some really decent artists at the yeah. moment. Yeah. Jackson's very goal minded. Yeah. Um he's he does well in um his different avenues in life. So I'm excited to see what he does. Yeah. Uh Heiser, holy dooly, he's just focused on writing music at the moment and his yeah. his music's insane. Yeah. So he's keeping himself relatively quiet and just focusing on putting out the tracks. Yeah. But I tell you what, the momentum that he'll get with the roll on, just by track after track. Yeah. Stupid. It's yeah, gonna be awesome. stupid. I think I was saying before, I don't know what I was going to do after like we do this podcast, but I think I'm going to go and write some music. Write now. some I think music. I probably should because I'm yeah. here. Like I may as well. Do it. Write yeah. some music and um, you know that we're always here and if, if it's good, we're going to put it oh, out. Yeah. If it's good, I'll send it to you. 100%. <laughs> yeah. So, and that's actually the conversation I had with Michael, the guy from Melbourne who sitting on this bank of music that I was like, whoa. Yeah. I, I had the catfish story. Yeah, my guy. catfish guy. Um, <laughs> I had the same conversation with him the other day. I was like, like, y- if you want to take this serious, we're giving you a serious opportunity. Mm. Take it. Mm. If you don't want to take it, it's no skin off our nose mm. because we'll give it to someone else who wants it. Yeah. And who's passionate about music. Yeah. Because they, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying trying to create that family yeah. um passionate network where we're all in it for the right reasons. Yeah. So we can grow each other and yeah. help each other. Yeah. And then start a really fresh culture here. Yeah, that's what I've I've realized recently is that ideas, money, concepts aren't so much. Mm-mm. They're not as important as the people. That's I right. Think, the culture and the people you work yep. with. If you can find a good team that work together really well and uh, and you've got the same ideas and that kind of stuff. It doesn't really matter what you're working on. No. Nah. It'll be successful yep. because you're both, you know, or, or, you know, not both. It could be more than two people. You've yeah, all got you, the, bring, you know, bring everyone in the strengths. Because yeah. uh, you'll figure it out. Oh, 100%. Yeah. yeah. That's like um, you can go to the All Blacks, for example, their culture. Mm. So they're known as like the, the culture capital. Everyone in the sporting industry talks about the culture of the All Blacks. So that's what I guess you could say we're trying to create is culture around music yeah. and trying to go forward with it. Yeah. So we support the absolute shit out of people and if they support us, that's a bonus. Yeah. But as long as we can help support yeah. other people. Awesome. Yeah. What a great way to end the podcast, I think. Yeah, thanks. Um, <laughs> yeah, I love that. Um, so but what have we got? Is there anything coming up that you guys are doing? You've got any... Big I've got releases or yeah, anything I've coming got, up. Or, I've got another what? release coming out. Um, yep. Myself personally, Damo's got a bank of music. Yeah, I remember he showed me a few tunes. And yeah, stuff. Um, he's, he's got some cool stuff. Yeah, yeah, he's got a he's got a few weapons, eh? So I've got a couple of tracks coming up. To be honest, we're really focusing on the business side. Um, my goal is to have personally. I would like three solid artists. Don't want to be huge, but three people that um, I can mentor to personally grow yep. and achieve the achieve goals for them. I get a lot more satisfaction out of helping other people. Yeah. So that's the goal for that avenue. Release some more music, and to be honest, just trying to get a roll on with everybody. Yeah. So I want to just keep supporting people. Yeah. See the scene grow and get better. And yeah. Bigger. I keep saying to everyone, I'm like, let's make like. Brisbane and Queensland and yeah. all, like, every, like Queensland. Let's. Why can't we be the Melbourne of Australia? Like I'm gonna say this. Why can't we be those? You know that we can be exactly. And I'm gonna say there's something that's someone said to me one day. I will not name his name, but he told me that down in Sydney, they laugh at the Gold Coast. They think we're all a joke, and that has never sat well with me. Mm. And one thing I'll say is, we're not a joke. And we've got some amazing talent, yeah. Latua, Cody Latua, yeah. holy fuck. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've got some good talent on the Gold Coast yeah. and we've got some good talent in Brisbane 
and let's make us bigger than Sydney and Melbourne. I, I just think that they don't know any of the people. They don't. They don't know it because no. they don't look. So Yeah, yeah. they're in their That'll bubble. change. Yeah. I feel like we are we'll changing. We'll see you guys up here in Brisbane yeah. soon. Boom. <laughs> we will change the uh, scene. Yeah. Look awesome. forward to it. Well, cool. Thanks for coming in. Um, I guess we'll finish these beers yeah. off, off camera. And where can we find you <laughs> online and things like that? Um, like, so what's, what's the best places? I've got my um, website, so DJ Sarah Wilkinson. Yeah, and, and that'll link to everything. That'll link so to that's everything. Probably the best yeah. place to check, but yeah. Preferably, I'd like people to go to sortakindofmusic.com. com. Yeah. Because that's where all our artists are, all our music yep. is, and send us through your music. Yeah. Send some demos. Um, we're really looking at putting out a shitload of music. Awesome. Yep. Well, thanks for coming on. Thank you. I appreciate thanks you, know, for having you me. making the trip up. And mm. I know you probably might be a little late for your thing. Oh, well, that's all right. But uh, it's a your, bender your film, film clip. clip. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, well they've got to start. You're, you're already you, on the beers. So you've got There's going to be some weird scenes. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> Fuck. All right. Thanks, guys. Make sure you Thank check you. out, um, you know, all of Sarah's music, sort of kind of music and, um, you know, the label and everything that she's doing. So, um, yeah, thanks for coming on. Thank you. We'll see everyone later. See you, guys. See ya. Thanks, mate.